Here now with Alex Sands and Alex, you and I know the image that you're seeing right there. A lot of people saying it resembles it. It's a pleasure to have you back on the Bible Mysteries channel. A peculiar sight in the skies last night caught our attention. Lately, we have been observing many signs coming from the heavens, seemingly without explanation. However, the Bible teaches us that Jesus Christ will return triumphantly to earth again. The Word of God declares that the second coming of Jesus will be personal, visible, and glorious. When the bells rang, indicating that the final moment was approaching, people were filled with panic and fear as they witnessed a series of events fulfilling Bible prophecies. We observed the Euphrates River drying up and fierce wars erupting in the Middle East. In Eastern countries, natural disasters resulting in terrible catastrophes in Mecca and the reconstruction of the Third Temple seem to suggest that angels have brought back the light and love of God to the human world to save people during the Great Tribulation. Is the appearance of angels paving the way for God's return? Is it possible for humans to be saved in today's world? These questions will be explored in this video. Make sure to watch until the end so as not to miss any important details. Additionally, I've left a gift for you in the first pinned comment, which will surely change your life in 2024, bringing many financial blessings to you and your family. There have been numerous strange sightings in the sky, sparking debates about divine signs, extraterrestrial beings, and the possibility of weather manipulation or teleportation many strange sightings in the sky, including angel-shaped clouds and figures, have sparked debates about divine signs and extraterrestrial beings. A large hovering figure, mistakenly confused with Jesus, was speculated to be a water-spout angel, and humanoid figures flying were seen in the sky, generating speculation and debate. From these comments, people immediately think of signs of Jesus' return. Are these sudden appearances signs why do they believe this? It's because the Bible mentions signs in the sky when Jesus is coming. After celestial signs are witnessed in various parts of the earth, then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky, and all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Matthew 24, 3 says, Then will appear in heaven the sign of the Son of Man, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Those who have never paid attention to these warning signs will be terrified at the appearance of Jesus Christ. But Jesus promised to the faithful, when these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your heads, because your redemption is drawing near Luke 21, 28. For those who are watchful, God provides a way of escape from his wrath. Now, let's dive deeper into the Bible to see what it says about angels and the signs of God's return. What does the Bible say about angels? Angels are personal and spiritual beings who possess intelligence, emotions, and will. This is true for both good and evil angels. Angels have intelligence, demonstrate emotion, and exercise will. They are spiritual beings without true physical bodies. Though they do not have physical bodies, they are still personalities and occasionally assume physical forms. As created beings, their knowledge is limited, meaning they do not know all things as God does. However, it seems they have greater knowledge. The knowledge of angels appears to surpass that of humans, which can be attributed to three factors. First, angels were created as a higher order of creatures than humans, thus inherently possessing greater knowledge. Second, angels know what the Word of God says. Third, angels acquire knowledge through prolonged observation of human activities. Unlike humans, angels do not need to study the past they have experienced it. Therefore, they know how others acted and reacted in situations and can predict more accurately how we might act in similar circumstances. Though they have wills, angels, like all creatures, are subject to the will of God. Good angels are sent by God to aid believers. Angels are a wholly different order of beings from humans. Humans do not become angels after death, and angels have never been nor will ever be humans. God created angels just as he created humanity. 
The Bible nowhere states that angels were created in the image and likeness of God as humans were. What do angels look like? There are several descriptions in the Bible of angels appearing in their glory. In Daniel chapter 10, we read the prophet Daniel's description of Gabriel. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire, his arms and feet like polished bronze, and the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. The angel who rolled away the stone from Christ's tomb had a face like lightning and his garments were white as snow. The guards trembled with fear and became like dead men at the sight of him. If you wonder if angels are real, yes, they are real and not products of our imagination. In Genesis, chapters 18 and 19, we read about the appearance of angels to God's servant, Abraham. God's angels can appear and disappear at will and are still real beings. Do angels appear to people nowadays? In the Bible, angels appear to people in unpredictable and diverse ways. A casual reading of scripture might give the impression that angelic appearances were commonplace, but this is not the case. Today, there is a growing interest in angels, and there are many reports of angelic appearances. Angels are part of almost every religion and generally seem to have the same messenger role. According to modern reports, angelic visits occur in various forms. In some cases, a stranger prevents serious injury or death and then mysteriously disappears. In other cases, a winged or white-robed being is seen for a moment and then disappears. The person who sees the angel often feels a sense of peace and certainty of God's presence. Another type of visitation that is. Sometimes reported today is the kind of angelic chorus mentioned in Luke 2.13, where the shepherds were visited by a heavenly chorus while the birth of Jesus was announced to them. Some people have reported similar experiences in places of worship. This experience does not fit as well into the model as it usually serves no purpose other than providing a sense of spiritual uplift. The chorus of angels in Luke's gospel was announcing some very specific news. A third type of visitation involves only a physical sensation. Elderly people often report feeling as though arms or wings are enfolding them in moments of extreme loneliness. Certainly, God is the God of all comfort, and the scriptures speak of God covering with his wings. God continues to be as active in the world as he ever was, and his angels surely are still at work. Just as angels protected God's people in the past, we can be assured that they are guarding us today. Hebrews 13.2 says, Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by so doing some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. As we obey God's commandments, it is quite possible that we may encounter his angels, even if we don't realize it. In special circumstances, God has allowed his people to see his invisible angels to encourage and motivate them to continue in his service. However, we must also heed the warnings of scripture about angels. There are fallen angels who work for Satan and who will do anything to subvert and destroy us. We are encouraged by the knowledge that God's angels are at work. In special circumstances, we may even have one of those rare personal visitations even more significant than these. However, the most important knowledge is that Jesus himself said, surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age Jesus, who made the angels and receives their worship, has promised us his own presence in our tribulations. What are the celestial signs mentioned in biblical prophecy? Jesus Christ and the apostle John described terrible supernatural signs in the sun, moon, and stars between the great tribulation and the day of the Lord. Why will God send these signs in the last days? In the prophecy on the Mount of Olives in Matthew 24, Jesus Christ prophesied some important signs of the end times. Immediately after the tribulation, the time of unprecedented trouble described earlier in the chapter, in the days of those signs, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. John expanded on this theme of celestial signs under the inspiration of Jesus Christ. Revelation 6, 12, 17 records the sixth seal I watched as he opened the sixth seal. There was a great earthquake. The sun turned black like sackcloth made of goat hair. The whole moon turned blood red and the stars in the sky fell to earth as figs drop from a fig tree 
when shaken by a strong wind. The heavens receded like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was removed from its place. Then the kings of the earth, the princes, the generals, the rich, the mighty, and everyone else, both slave and free, hid in caves and among the rocks of the mountains. They called to the mountains and the rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of their wrath has come, and who can withstand it throughout the centuries, humanity has been fascinated by celestial bodies, sometimes worshipping them, but sometimes reading omens in them. Ordinary events like eclipses and comets would instill fear and be seen as signs of imminent disaster. But modern man has mapped the skies and calculated eclipses and comet orbits. What would it take to grab people's attention today? It will likely take the spectacular displays of the celestial signs prophesied by Christ. All the temptations that constantly assail us are faced by us through worship, not only with symbolic gifts, but with our best gifts, offered through the church for which he sacrificed his life. We express our worship by saying, Not my will, but yours be done. O oh, come, let us adore him, Christ the Lord. That concludes today's video. If you enjoyed this content, please give it a like and subscribe. Don't forget to check the first pinned comment. Your support is our motivation, and don't forget to turn on the notification bell to stay updated on the latest videos from our channel. Hope to see you in the next videos, and may God bless you.